Hi everyone, I'm Hummy, and today we're going to be talking about uh, saving files and the various file formats. Um, now that you've made your first layout tutorial, it's important to learn the various ways to save it so that you can utilize the tutorial, the uh, layouts. Um, the first thing we'll discuss as in the tutorial is the file formats and there are three main extensions that you need to learn to recognize. Um, an extension is the uh, three letters after the dot in a file name and uh, they the extension of a file designates um, what programs the uh, file will be used in. For instance, a .doc file is uh, for a Word document. So a .doc file is not going to be able to be opened up in Photoshop Elements. Only image uh, extensions will work in Photoshop Elements. And the three we need to learn about are right here. The first one is the most common uh, that you may already be aware of. It's a .jpg or sometimes called a JPEG and um, this is the file type that you will need to have to print from or to make a slideshow or email or put on the internet um, and share in other various ways. The uh, second um, extension is a .psd. This is a Photoshop file extension and this is the extension um, the file type in which uh, layers are preserved. Uh, if you would like to go back and edit your layout at any time, you're going to need to have a copy of your layout in a .psd uh, file type. And so commonly you will have your layout in both file types saved in both ways. You'll create it first as a .psd and save that and then you will save it as a, a JPEG um, for uh, purposes of, of using it. The third file type used in uh, Photoshop Elements is a .png also known as a ping file and this file allows for transparency. Um, in other words, if you have a tag that you're going to be putting on your page, um, it is most likely going to be a ping file because the area around the tag is not going to have a background. It's going to be transparent. Um, and papers are m all, almost always, um, unless they're a quick page, uh, they're almost always JPEGs and all of the elements are usually pings. And the only um, reason you would need to know what a ping is is to recognize it when um, looking through your folders or if you're going to be designing. Um, the only other file format that uh, keeps a transparency around um, the object in the file would be a GIF, dot G, G -E, dot G -I -F, <laughs> tongue twister there. And um, a GIF file uh, sometimes is uh, uh, used in um, websites when you want a transparent file up on a website because a ping file uh, most often doesn't do well on a website. Um, instead you'd want a GIF file if you were doing a transparent image on a website. Um, let's go ahead and I'm going to bring up Photoshop Elements and this is the layout that I made today uh, for the heritage challenges of my grandparents. Um, many people will recommend that before you save it as a JPEG that you flatten your layouts. Um, I uh, do not uh, do this because I don't have problems. Um, some people will complain that their uh, text gets fuzzy when they save it as a JPEG and if yours does that this might be one way of uh, resolving that problem. 
Um, this is a totally optional uh, feature. I don't use it because once you make a major change such as this, you risk the chance of accidentally saving your .psd as one layer and losing all those layers. So you do need to be careful if you're going to be doing this. Um, to flatten all the layers, it's, it's really easy to do. In the layer drop down menu, the very bottom you're going to see flatten image. And if there's any hidden layers, like this one over here is invisible, um, it asks you if you want to discard all those and I'm going to say yes. And now you can see my layout is in one layer and it's all flattened. Um, I'm going to quickly hit undo. Uh, if you close it out and it asks you if you want to save yet and you say yes after having uh, flattened your image you are going to lose all of your layers and will not be able to edit your layout again. So please be careful. Um, I'm repeating it again if you do this technique so that you uh, do not lose those layers. Now there's a method some people use to um, uh, save uh, for uh, well let, let me go back. Um, let's continue with save for printing. To save for printing you're going to want the highest quality and you can choose to flatten before you do this next step or not. And go to in the file drop down menu choose save as and navigate. I made a tutorial template folder on uh, my desktop to work from and choose the folder where you want to put uh, your JPEG. Uh, make sure it's named as you would like it named. In this drop down menu choose JPEG. Then click the Save button. This pop-up is going to come up and this is a very important pop-up box. Um, right now the quality is set at 9 this is not the highest quality. You'll notice if I grab this slider and move it to the right, that quality box moves up. And when I get all the way to the right, it is a 12. So you could manually type 12 in here, or you could slide the slider all the way over. Um, down here, baseline standard is fine. And then you would click OK. And it's going to save it now for web purposes. but keep this layered one uh, safe. Now saving for web, um, I did a separate video already using the save for web feature so you can go watch that. Uh, another method, um, I don't prefer to do it, Another one reason why is um, you may accidentally once again save over your original uh, layered and uh, layered file and uh, lose it, but you can go to the image drop down menu, resize, image size, and if you simply put 72 in here, um, as long as these are locked, it will change the other fields for uh, pixels, and then you can choose OK, and it um, will uh, reduce your entire file to a much smaller size and then you can do a save as. However, be careful when you close out if it asks you if you want to save it after making this change or remember to go back and hit that undo button. Um, one last thing we're going to cover is um, attaching uh, to emails. You can use, um, I used to use this often, uh, the services provided right in Photoshop elements, but um, I tend to not do that anymore. It used to be in earlier versions in the file drop down menu, you would find uh, the setting for email attachments. In Photoshop Elements 6, you click on this Share tab and then click on Email Attachments, and it will bring up the organizer and your layout, I'm not going to go through the process here because it would be time consuming, your layout's going to show up here in this box. 
you would choose a size and a quality and hit next and continue following in on um, through the steps. You could uh, attach it to an email in that method. However, let me get down to my desktop, get my desktop layout out of the way. Um, here's my temporary folder which I saved to earlier. In XP, if I right click on the file, I can go down to send to mail recipient and that is going to automatically bring up my default um, email client that's set on your computer. Mine happens to be Outlook and reduce the size of it and put it right into a new uh, compose message for you and it works really quickly and that is uh, the method that I tend to use when I'm emailing because if you would try to email this it's going to bounce right back it's much too large of a file. If you have any questions certainly ask in the forums and I will try to answer the best I can and uh, many happy scrapping days!